Hey guys, so previously we've talked about the parts of the atom, things like the proton and neutron and the electron. And you put them all together and we get the atom. We have 118 different elements. So today we're gonna to talk about what makes an atom different from one element to the next. Stick around. After Rutherford's gold foil experiment, there was a scientist whose name was Henry Moseley. And Henry Moseley discovered that in each atom, there was a unique positive charge for each nucleus in those respective atoms. So it was determined that the number of protons in an atom identifies it as a particular element. So we call that the atomic number. Again, the atomic number is equal to the amount of protons contained in the nucleus of that atom. Since atoms are balanced, since they are neutral, that means you have to have equal amounts of protons and electrons. So you could also say that the atomic number is equal to the number of electrons as well. Now before Moseley's discovery, the periodic table had been arranged by atomic mass, increasing atomic mass. But now with this discovery and the number of protons for each element, it was decided that it would be rearranged according to atomic number. So increasing atomic number, starting with Hydrogen, right up there at the top, hydrogen only has one proton, and therefore its atomic number is one. And then, of course, helium, right up, there it is, helium, right there, has two protons, and so therefore its atomic number is two. You get the idea. Lithium with atomic number three, beryllium with atomic number four, and so on. Each one indicating the number of protons in that atom of that element. On a periodic table, each element is contained inside a box, its own box, with its information. This one is for carbon, for example. You can usually find the atomic number at the top of that box, right here in our case, in the upper right-hand side. This is the atomic number for carbon. Carbon has six protons. So we already talked about how Dalton was incorrect on the fact that atoms can be divided. He thought that they were indivisible. And another thing that he was incorrect about was that all atoms of an element are identical. All atoms within a particular element have the same number of protons and electrons. However, the number of neutrons can be different. Let's take these carbon atoms, for example. Up on the board, these are representations of nuclei, nucleuses, of three different carbon atoms. You'll notice that all three of these atoms have six protons. They're designated by the red circle with the plus sign in the middle. So here, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six protons in each atom. And it has to be that way because carbon has six protons. It doesn't have seven. It doesn't have five. It doesn't have 80. Carbon has six protons. The atomic number of carbon is six. Remember? Okay. So they all have the same amount of protons, but you'll notice that they have different numbers of neutrons. This first one, for example, has six neutrons. The second one has seven neutrons, and the third one has eight neutrons. Whenever we have atoms that have the same number of protons, but different numbers of neutrons, we call those isotopes. Isotopes that have more neutrons in them are going to have a greater mass. Now, in spite of that, even though they have different numbers of neutrons, chemically their behavior is still the same. What we find is that it's the electrons that determine the chemical behavior of an atom. But we'll get to that later. We need to be able to designate between the isotopes. To do that, we use something called the mass number. The mass number is simply the atomic number plus the number of neutrons. Or you could say the mass number is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. Carbon has three isotopes. One of them we call carbon-12. You see that because we have six protons and six neutrons. Since each of those has an approximate atomic mass of one, six and six make 12. Over here we have one additional neutron, don't we? 
So our mass is going to be increased by one. So therefore, we call this carbon-13. And finally, when we have six protons and eight neutrons, that gives us a total of 14. So we call this carbon-14. It's important to note that we don't have equal amounts of these found in nature. In fact, as far as carbon goes, most of the carbon in the universe is carbon-12, about 99% of it. A very small amount of carbon-13 exists, and then an even smaller amount of carbon-14 exists. We would call it a trace amount. We can designate isotopes symbolically, and sometimes that's easiest for us, like you see here. Here we have the atomic symbol, in this case, a C for carbon. The atomic number, or number of protons, goes in the lower left, and the mass number, the protons plus neutrons in that atom, goes in the upper left. So this is what we call symbolic notation. To find the number of neutrons present in a particular isotope, all you have to do is subtract the atomic number from the mass number, and you have the number of neutrons. Therefore, we can easily see that this isotope has 13 minus 6, 7 neutrons. Now remember that the actual mass of protons and neutrons, extremely small, about 1.67 times 10 to the negative 24th grams. And electrons are even smaller. An electron is almost 2,000 times less massive than a proton is. That's kind of clunky to use in calculations. So to kind of help things, to make things a little simpler, chemists developed a method of measuring mass of an atom relative to what we call the mass of an atomic standard. The standard they decided upon, the carbon-12 atom. So they assigned the carbon-12 atom a mass of exactly 12 atomic mass units. Therefore, an atomic mass unit is defined as 1 12th the mass of a carbon-12 atom. By the way, in the interest of full disclosure, protons and neutrons are actually slightly greater than one atomic mass unit. The protons actually are about 1.00728 give or take, and a uh, neutron is about 1.00866 atomic mass units. So there you go. And here's something cool. You remember when we talked about John Dalton before? Well, in honor of him, the atomic mass unit is often called the Dalton. Because the mass of an atom depends on protons and neutrons, and since both of those are around one atomic mass unit, you'd expect for the atomic mass of the element to be around a whole number. But quite often it's not. And the reason is because you have isotopes. Since the isotopes have different masses and different levels of abundance in nature, then the atomic mass is more along the lines of, say, an average of all those put together. So we say that the atomic mass of an element is the weighted average mass of all the isotopes of that element. Back to the periodic table again. In our box, with our information about each element, the atomic mass is found on the bottom. In the case of carbon, the atomic mass is 12.011. Again, it's the average of all the isotopes of carbon combined. And remember that carbon is mostly carbon-12, with just a few bits of carbon-13 and carbon-14 mixed in. Because of that, we see that the atomic mass of carbon is slightly greater than 12, 12.011. It's sort of like if you got 90s all the time, you know, 90 on this paper, 90 on that test, 90 on that assignment, and so forth. 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90. And then one day, all of a sudden, you got a 91 on something. You wouldn't say that your overall average is 90.5, would you? No, because you have all those other grades involved. So it just ticks up ever so slightly above 90. That's the way it is with carbon. Since so much of it is carbon-12, and just a tiny little bit is carbon-13 and carbon-14, then we get that little bit above the average, so 12.011. So how do they figure out atomic mass? Well, experimentally. They take a sample of an element, and in that sample they're able to determine not only the number of isotopes that are involved, but also the respective abundances of each, how much of a percentage each of those isotopes makes of the whole. So for an example of how this is done, let's take a look at chlorine. Chlorine has two isotopes. One is what we call chlorine-35. 
It has 17 protons, as chlorine always does, and this particular isotope has 18 protons. 17 plus 18 yields a mass number of 35. Now the actual mass of chlorine-35 is 34.969 atomic mass units, or Daltons. Here is chlorine-37. Again, 17 protons because chlorine always does. In this case, we have 20 neutrons. 17 and 20 make a mass number of 37. The actual mass of chlorine-37 is 36.966 AMU or Daltons. The abundance of chlorine-35 is 3 quarters, 75.77%. In other words, in all the isotopes of chlorine, 75.77% of them are chlorine-35. The rest is chlorine-37. So we have 24.23% of chlorine-37. The way that we solve for atomic mass is really not that difficult. We take the mass of isotope 1, and we multiply it by its fraction. Now we don't mean the percentage, we mean the fraction. So what we have to do is we take this and convert it to a decimal. It's not 75.77%, but now it's 0.7577. So added to that is the mass of isotope 2 multiplied by its fraction. So in other words, it would be 0.2423. And we would do that with additional isotopes if we had them. We only have two in this case, so that's all we'll do. So let's put it all together and we'll show you how to solve it. First, I take the mass of chlorine-35, that is 34.969 AMU, and I multiply it by the fraction of the total abundance, 0.7577. Note that I have taken my percentage and converted it to a decimal. We want the fraction, not the percent, okay? So make sure you convert. Now, over here I have chlorine-37, the mass of which is 36.966 AMU, and I multiply it by its fraction, 0.2423. Again, I convert this to a decimal. This gives me 26.496, and this gives me 8.9569, and all I do is add those together and I get a total atomic mass of 35.453. Now if you'll go look at a periodic table, you'll notice that the atomic mass of chlorine is 35.453. So that's how they figure the atomic mass of an element. Here's a side note, but I think it's one you might find interesting. You might be wondering if a proton and a neutron both have an actual mass of slightly more than one atomic mass unit, then why is this number less than 35? That's because of something called mass defect. When these nuclei are formed with the protons and neutrons, some of the mass is actually converted to energy, energy that it takes to bind that nucleus together. You might recall Einstein's classic formula E equals mc squared. That's actually how we figure the energy that's involved in forming that nucleus. So again, it's called mass defect, and it's the reason why these numbers are less than the combined masses of the protons and neutrons that go into their nuclei. Okay, for your homework, I want you to determine atomic mass for an unknown. I'm not going to tell you what the element is, but you might be able to figure it out once you're done. It has two isotopes, one is 6.015 AMU and has an abundance of 7.50%. The other is 7.016 AMU and has an abundance of 92.50%. Just like we did with chlorine, see if you can figure out the atomic mass of this particular element. And how about you try to tell me what it is too? You can put your answers in the LMS. And just so you know, you can always find the atomic mass at the bottom of the box in which that element is located. So the atomic mass for carbon is 12.011. Again, that's the weighted average of all the isotopes of carbon. Be sure not to confuse atomic mass with mass number. The mass number is simply the number of protons plus neutrons for that particular isotope, not the entire element, just the one isotope. Atomic mass 
is the average of all those isotopes. Get it? Okay. That's all we're going to do for today. Today we talked about the differences that we see in atoms of particular elements. How we have an atomic number that is equal to the amount of protons or electrons that that particular element has. We also talked about how each element can have isotopes. Atoms of that element that have the same number of protons but may have different numbers of neutrons. And then we discussed how we calculate atomic mass using the isotopes of that element and the respective abundances in nature. So, I hope it's been helpful to you and informative. As always, if I can help you out in any way, just let me know. Until next time, God bless.